This next video in the series is going to refer to finding linear equations from a graph. Now as you can see I have two different graphs here, well you can see one of them, two different graphs we're going to be working with today. And in both of these cases I simply need two pieces of information. First, I need to know what my slope or the steepness and direction of my line are going to be. I'll use the letter M for slope. And slope is de uh, described as rise over run. That's how we would often define slope. So in this case, what I'm going to try and do is find two different points that touch some of these crosshairs. So I'm going to look around carefully on my graph and I see two points that are jumping out at me already. I also see some others. I see a point right there and I see a point right here. I see a variety of points. Any of them would be functional. We'll just go ahead and use the two darkened ones though that I have. And let's go ahead and deal with our rise and run. From this point to this point, how much do I go up? Well, I'm going to rise one, two, three layers. So my rise is going to be three. And because I'm going up every time, I'm going to associate that with a positive three. Now from this point, I'm going to move to the right one, two, three places to get back to that second point, or some people might say to get back on the line. That was a three again. And a move to the right is considered a positive move as well. So a positive 3 divided by a positive 3 is a positive 1. So my slope now is 1. My y-intercept. Which I'm going to use the letter B for. Is simply the point where the diagonal line, and it doesn't need to be diagonal, but it is in this case. Where my line touches the y-axis. So in this case I can just look and see that it touches right there. I'm going to count up from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so my y-intercept is simply 4. Now, we finish it by writing an equation. The typical format of the equation is going to be slope times x plus my y-intercept, or mx plus b. So I'll simply fill in my spaces. y equals m, which is 1, x plus b, which is 4. And surely your teachers are going to remind you that not only can you write it 1x plus 4, but it might be nice style to be able to write it without the 1. Even though it's still there, it's nice if you don't have to see it. So both of those would be acceptable to most math teachers. This one, though, would be the more acceptable version because we know the 1 is there, but we don't need to write it. As for a second example, we have another x, y axis another line describing some sort of a linear function. I'm going to do the same pattern. This time I'm going to deal with slope as a rise over run. And again, I see some points that are marked. I'll choose, and I'll choose this one and this one for variety. I'm going to go for the lower one if I can, and I'm going to rise up one. Well, that's not enough yet. I'll rise up two, and that's on the same level. So a rise of two goes on top. Now my run, I have a lot of these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 to the left. And left is a negative direction, so I'll make 10 negative. And to simplify that fraction, I get a positive divided by a negative. That gives me a negative 1 fifth. That's my slope. As for my y-intercept, my b, it touches right here. I can see that. So I simply count down 1, 2, 3 spaces and it's negative 3 on the y-axis. So again, now I'm simply going to follow my mx plus b format, which we saw before. m is negative 1 fifth, x plus, and here I have a negative 3. So this would be acceptable, and again, many math teachers would prefer a slightly cleaned up version of this. y equals negative 1 fifth x plus negative is commonly referred to as simply minus 3. In my class, I would happily take both, but again, if you're looking for the better of the two answers, that would be the better of the two. What you've just seen is how to graph a linear equation, I'm sorry, how to calculate a linear equation directly from a graph.